It's going to be Dust 2 right now. And Nespotic, I need you to make some more noise because it is time for the second map of this series. Vince Hill and Jason Moses. Oh, Tool, you do love to hear them. And you're going to be hearing them all map long. Take it away, fellas. Thank you, Trace. Yes, the second map in this series at NIP. They must get out to a quick start. This is no joke. Astralis, you thought they were good at Mirage getting out to that 15 0 nothing lead. They are phenomenal on Dust 2 as well. One of the deepest map pools we have in the game. And NIP, this is tournament life on the line. This is where they need the veterans to stand tall. Lead by example. The good news for Nip, at least, is they're on the CT side. This is where it didn't really get to see much from them on Mirage. Dust 2, a much more even map, though, it has to be said. You can get a lot of success on the T side of the map. Dennis in the meanwhile, though, flashbang. Mid actually hits mate just but still comes out ahead with the Glock. And that opens up business on Catwalk side. Lecro's about to get tested by multiple T's. He's with all his points, and it's going to cost him his life. They needed him to hold on desperately. So many awkward fights for NIP, so many individual awkward fights. First tennis on Catwalk, Lecro at long with three players jumping wildly, difficult targets to hit. And it just snowballed out of control. Everyone from NIP caught out in the open against multiple Astralis members. Rez gonna try and use the planter. He knows where one is, not peeking. Wanted to try and even out the odds a little bit, but now he's stuck in the corner. Excellent pistol on the first map. Really shining light, but there's too many angles, too many bullets whizzing past his head, and finally, one of them will connect. And the Danish demolition crew continue their winning ways. It's another pistol round. Another pistol in their favor, another victorious start to a second map. They're gonna buy up. Perhaps expecting investment from NIP, who is actually not going to mount any resistance in this round. Just USPs, unarmored opponents. Lecro is going to be tagged. Small catwalk stack with two players. Get right and Dennis is going to be there, but again, just USPs. So even if you get to jump on somebody, no guarantee that weapon is going to be able to finish off the kills. A slight opportunity missed, and now taken away from the Magisk and Dupree. Two quick kills. Lecro getting the dink, but again, the USPs, so it doesn't do much. Not a lot of stopping power on those USPs. No, like mosquitoes to a windshield. Not too much gonna happen. And only have two of them left. The standard issue pistol in play for Forrest and Dennis are stacking together at the very least, looking if they can maybe take one of these stray Danes away. With a flashbang, keep proceeding. The vices push. Isn't gonna lose any health at all. Dennis in the same result for Forest 2. Astralis to a 2 0 lead. Well, that was pretty pretty quick and clinical. Now we get into the rifles. Now we have the AUGs being brought out on Dennis and Lecro and Rez. And four on Forest. So they'll be able to mount some defense, missing out on utility. One kid on Get Right who's got Smoke Flash, Molotov on Rez, but their utility is nothing to be too happy about. And tough part as well, with only one flashbang, a whole lot of ways to put your teammates in position to be aggressive, and Device is now two for two on the Scout Tags crossing mid. Yeah, that's going to put a couple plays in the range now with the UMPs as well, up close. Molotov onto Catwalk. Just trying to buy up a little bit of... Time to maneuver through the tunnels. Another one on mid. They're not pushing behind this though, Astralis. There's only one smoke left already for Nip though. And a flashbang. So little to fend them off. And they've thrown the smoke on short. It's going to be a hit. The rest hold on with the orb. So far so good. He's got one, but he's dropped to 24. And Magus will finish off the rest. Double entries on to B. And that should be the round following. It's so tough when you're in that position and you get the one kill as Rez, but the Molotov is really restricting your movement and it's a perfect for Majesty. He knows exactly where to aim as he swings wide. Astralis, patient enough, as you mentioned, to just run the utility, the counter utility low, and NIP have nothing to break that hit up. It had to have been brute force. And Magus gonna continue his tear from that first map. Saves coming out from these last three NIP members. They're, they can still buy up around this, maybe a half investment from Rez and Dennis. They won't be able to have rifles, but that is, you know, assuming that these rifles stay in the hands of Nip to the end of this round. Get right, even going to get a more passive angle. And Astralis not too dedicated to the 
Oh, my, they were hoping they'd find someone in T-Spawn. Glaive is going to be pushing around to get right. No reason to take that fight. You can see he's just getting deeper and deeper into cover. So they do three, bring three rifles forward. Oh, he was, uh, he was dinked pretty quickly. There we go, a follow-up. And Magisk with two kills pretty much seals the round. That B bomb site is so, so difficult to retake, especially as NIP just didn't have the nades to do it in that round. Yeah, just hit as well, and a little low health. Understand why they pulled the plug. They are going to get some weapons behind the, the saved. There's going to be a scout, and Lecro's already been found. Dennis at least going to get a kill back with a Molotov. So they, they had to have that evening kill. That, yeah, they, they needed to find that frag. It's a bit of a stalemate on long, but Magisk has now opened his account once more. The player that was reaping kills left and right in the first round is maybe going to pick up two in this. Forrest says no. Slaps it down. Going to be tested again. Flashbang has cleared. Forrest comes out. That's what Nip are looking for. They need Forrest to shine. Bomb's been dropped. Free fire. Not quite enough to claim Glaive, but Forrest, three separate jewels going his way. And Nip finally has something to cheer about. That was all on Forrest. He was exposed from middle as well if Astralis had been aggressive there. Even when he gets that kill in a match, he still has to hold on for so long. Those are the fights that he's going to love. Those short to mid-range fights. One-on-one, -on -one, no chance of trades, which is rare to see out of Astralis. And Forrest makes the most of that chance. But now they must build upon it. Going to reset the losing bonus. They must win this round. And Device has the AWP in his hands. Oh, and Forrest has been smacked up down to 13. Going to put him on the back foot. He is one of the B players. Get right in the meanwhile. Apply some pressure on Long. He's the only one there. Dennis and Lecro are both playing catwalk. Lecro is pretty aggressive. He's actually, with a little bit of pressure from Astralis by nades, he's just going to drop back. But he needs to stay at the safe bomb site. Dennis is going to need help because Gatwright, he's sliding back, but that really weakens his ability to hold long. If Zitmix is aggressive at all and is able to get out, he has a great angle. Now they retake long. Now Astralis, with all that pressure on towards Cat, could fall into a bit deep, but there's so many options available to them. There. And utility again running low. Lecro's got a Molotov, and that might be exactly what they need to stop a catwalk in it to come down. Has been used, but still 50 seconds. That Molotov's not going to last long. Astralis still have plenty of grenades. Three Molotovs, four Molotovs, pardon me, and smokes behind it. This is looking dire for Nip. The only good news is time is starting to dwindle. They're going to have to play off that. They need kills to come in right here, right now. The smoke's been deployed to CT. It's now two angled attack, and Glaive is the first to strike. It's going to be going all the way of the Danes. Get right, can maybe hold the line. All by his lonesome does get the first. Looking for a second pick, but up two is still alive for a few more moments. Has he stalled long enough for the rest of Nip to get close? I don't think they're going to go for this. Forrest only has 13 health, and Rez with no grenades. A valiant attempt by Get Right, but I, I don't think it's going to yield the round. No, it's not. Mostly because Force just doesn't have the HP to even come and try and fight for this. They have to back away. That's a beautiful hit from Astralis. That smoke on the long corner as well. Even though Get Right's rotating back, he doesn't have an angle to assist his teammates and to cover them. Astralis able to get in with ease. Opening two kills. If Get Right had gotten that third frag, he does dink Magisk. That might have been the one needed to prompt Rez and Force to go for it. Just not enough. A fourth round now for the offense. Money on NIP not looking great. Get Right can still buy an Augur and M4 with armor, so they might actually invest around this. It wouldn't be the worst decision in the world. Especially as the alternative would be tapping out and allowing Astralis to get even more of a stranglehold. We saw what they did on Mirage. Given an opportunity, they ran with it. So Nip will be force buying. Here is the players that unfold. It looked like it could be get right to dig them out of the ditch, but not quite. Let's move through to round six then. The Vice still has his all. And Clay making it roads out on long. They haven't been able to really cover this too well. They've had a couple of Avenge kills, but not much else going their way when it came to Long Array side. So much ground has been taken here, Jason. Molotov's whiff, though. Yeah, 
no one's there at car, so it's shouldn't be too much of a danger for Astralis, but here we go. The desk highlighted this exact play. Four players out long for Astralis to pre waiting in upper dark. Over towards that B bomb site. Glaive actually gonna fall back. And Astralis at the moment content to have control of long. It's a lot of time that device has to peer up into this A bomb site. Dana's gonna go for the peak now just as device gives up the angle. Maybe unfortunate timing, but this is a defense of the A site that's really consolidated on catwalk. I think a lot of that was off the back of the smoke on Xbox. They're not sure if they're pushing up mid. Get right's been forced out. Dennis with just a scout in his hands. He's going to land headshots. Needs to perforate. He's going to go down without much of a fight alongside Lecro. Rotation from Get Right into Long, but the battle has been lost on them. Get Right may get the better of Device, but doesn't want to overextend. They need to hold on to these guns. You have to imagine Astralis knows the, the money situation so well and just says, okay, the two B players saved their guns, so let's not even mess with them. Let's not even go to that side of the map. Let's attack long where we know they've been weakened, where even if they are able to buy or drop some guns over, there might not be the nades to stop this. And obviously going up against a scout and a pistol, NIP has only one real option left when those two players go down. Astralis really exploiting the economy of NIP at this point. A bit of fun in their downtime, allowing Nip to survive. One of the cases is allowed to kind of sit back and have a little bit of fun in their quarterfinal matchup. So Nip with another save. Can they feasibly go for anything? Not really. I mean, they could drop a couple of guns again, but they've never really had a, a strong hold of their economy on this half. Looks like they are going to be tapping out of this one. So just the two nades to play with. They do have some firepower, but Astralis have been choking them time and time again. And this time, Force and Rez play over towards Long. Exactly where Astralis attacked last time, but Astralis have changed up their point of attack. Again, this three-man thrust. Magis to pre and Device with Device providing cover with that AWP. They're going to find Lecro with his USP. Get Right's going to be there, but he's out of the double doors. He can't fight for this. His teammate has gone down too fast, so that's going to be frustrating for Lecro and frustrating for an IP. Trying to shuffle and change this defensive look so they can have their weapons to properly defend, and Astralis has the perfect call for it. Get Right. Going to try to do some sneaky plays. It's not going to work. Dupree looking for just that. Astralis have everything covered. Rez gonna find Glaive, but there is so much money. It's gonna be easy to replenish that fallen gun. It was worth the pursuit of taking the rifle away from NIP. Meanwhile, that does put an AK in Dennis's hands, but Astralis, they're gonna be 6-1 in the lead. And when you got battered on the first map and you're starting to get ba pretty battered here on Dust2, at least to open things up in the first stages of this happening. Even just saving an AK-47 isn't going to make you very happy. Astralis now have money saved up to actually go for some of these guns. Zipnik's going to lead the way. Great pop flash from Rez, or I mean, excuse me, from Zipnik's teammate to get Rez. He initially blinded him, but it made him look away. Force plus a lot of this. All spamming through. Somehow he's dodging those bullets. And there's the timer right at the end. The AWP and the AK-47 brought into the next round, and NIP must buy here, and they must start mounting a defense. Yeah, they played passively in the last round. It has to pay off for them now. Way more grenades. It's been a consistent pain in the backside for the Swedes. What can they do with it, though? Passing a lot of these grenades out early on. Device not able to consistently tag through the door. He was doing it with a scout, but not the AWP. So Dennis close up to provide cover for Force with that AWP. You would imagine it's going to stay aggressive and try and find a way towards top mid. Force, but the flashbangs are just too good. Dennis completely blind, and now he can't go for the retake, but he throws out his own flashbang and actually pulls Device off, and Device didn't see that one. Force trying to step up, trying to remain aggressive and have an impact. He's at least brought this into a 4-on-4, four four, but he wants another one. It's not going to happen. Very that, risky play there, Moses. That might be a sign of desperation of when you're trying to do a little bit too much because you can just feel like you need something. 
And it's hard to run him after that first map. There's Lecro. Oh dear. From bad to worse for NIP, get right and res. Gonna have to stand very tall and deliver something special if they're gonna pick up their second round here. He bumps and he's gonna get a free kill on the res. He snuck in that whole time. It's just get right. 13 HP, which you don't like to see, but he's got the bomb down. And he's doing what he believes will be the last thing they expect. Get aggressive through those mid doors, but there's so much time for Astralis to work with. And Zipnik's had him dead to rights. So if he just comes around this corner, get right's gonna be looking towards the left. It finds him, frags him. Astralis 7 1. Commanding lead once again. And that was the round that we were putting a lot of emphasis on because Nip finally get themselves a solid buy and it's just the same result. There's a bomb on that chicken. <laughs> Who was it yesterday that kept wrecking Oh, it was Nitro, wasn't it? Just kept knifing all the chickens. Yes, he was. And they lost, so there's a... A little bit of chicken karma in there for you? Yeah. Well, now... All the advantages for Astralis. A main stack in the long cave and device is gonna find Get Right. Just as the smoke and shrapnel fades. And Astralis started to pick up the pace, feeling comfortable. Molotov gonna force that Deagle to fight in an awkward position, and A is open. One more player at long, two players rotating away from B, but Astralis, no matter where they've gone, no matter what it's been up against, they've pretty much gotten everything they want. Necro's gonna be able to get two, though, from the side of long. Neither of Astralis were checking that out. Time to take your foot off the gas. But Lecro gonna meet Zipnix, who's always focused, always concentrating. Red with his energy to try and pick up the slack. Same fate. Well, here we go. Another buy for NIP. They didn't invest a whole lot just so they could have the benefit of the losing bonus so they can get this double op set up. Lecro and Forest. And this feels like their last chance. This switch up into this defense, this is so important if NIP want to make a comeback. Kanavitsa, does anyone still believe in Nip Magic? Well, Forrest certainly does. He's opened up the round. And lands onto Glaive. So early damage, certainly in favor of the Swedes, but can they capitalize? It's consistent theme, the same on Mirage. They get the first pick and it just slips away. They need to grab onto this with both hands. The nice thing, obviously, that follow-up is happening for us. Glaive down so low, he might be forced to chill a little bit and Forrest doing it all. Remember, he's responsible for their single round win as well. And now the AWP is ringing true, and he's being very aggressive and very mobile on this map, trying to rotate into the point of contact. The double AWP's now working wonders as Lecro ad adds on top of it. Is it going to be the clean sweep? A little bit of confidence. Yes, it is. NIP, welcome back. Three kills for the two AWPs they picked up. That's brilliant. And all five players surviving, that's even more so. Something perhaps for NIP to build upon. They hadn't gone for those aggressive peaks this whole half, and Forrest is going to get some nice ones. It's a kind of clean round that can build confidence to it, can inspire. It can open up the playbook as well if they choose to be aggressive, but with this double op, you still want the ops to be the first thing making contact for NIP. Dennis around the edge of the smoke, he's got to be careful. They're spamming through, a counter flash comes out, he's going to go right back in. That flash makes blinds get right, but allows him to get position. They're taking so much damage, but they're winning these fights until just now. Get right, the last man standing. Magisk was burning, he puts out a smoke. There's no one to help get right, he's all on his own, and he missed a chance for one more. Magisk has to let Device take control of this situation. He's still holding on to Pit. Get right, he's gonna take the initiative, change his position. Still 75 health, so he's got plenty of HP in his back pocket to try and trade off against these two players. But Astralis realizing that it's a three on three and there's still plenty of the map at their disposal, gonna back the bomb out of there, leaving Magisk all alone. This could catch Get Right off guard. I believe he heard the footsteps there, the flashback so well played from Astralis. Gives them the player advantage, and NIP on the back foot once again. 
Oh dear, Rez. He might want to fall back. He's going to go for the fight. He finds Dupree. That play from Astralis leaving Magus got long, falling back and tossing the flashbang from Device. That might have been one of the most beautiful plays I've seen in any of these quarterfinals. That is so smart from Astralis. Rez needs to hold on to the B bomb. Device to challenge him, and that's a nasty angle for the AUG. Magisk with low HP. He was hoping Device could open things up. He's gonna grab an AK-47 and go for it, but it looks like NIP is gonna get up to three rounds on Dust 2. The footsteps have been heard. The utility gives it away even more. And he's not even gonna check the car. Rez, three kills in the round, and NIP. A little bit more hope building. It's two in a row, additionally for NIP, and that's going to put Astralis into a bit of a sticky situation. As device down to 3.5k, everyone else can afford. But this is where they can start to break that economy down into bite-sized pieces. Landing shots that previously they wouldn't have. Another timeout has been called. This time out for Astralis, I don't think they're necessarily feeling nervous in any way, but this is the last buy, or they're getting pretty much down to that last investment area. Three players below at $300 or less. Some players missing nades, so they just want to make sure they go over it, see if they can win one to continue buying. I don't think they've had to save in this series yet. Wasn't far off there, Dupree. It would have been a brutal start to the round. I believe it was Forrest that was peaking with his AWP. Flashbang, neutralizing Get Right's vision. Didn't see Glaive hop across. I think Glaive saw him though. He did, absolutely. Hence the Molotov. But the head now going to be sticking over the top. Get Right's going to counteract with a molly of his own. Also the smoke behind, but could stick around. Try and play some mind games. Decides better of it. Yeah, he doesn't want to mess with that fight. A lot of pressure applied to Get Right in an awkward scenario, and he knew he just didn't have the advantage. Preserves the five versus five. These ops though, Rez in the back of B. Lecro with one, now gonna watch Catwalk as Get Right shifts towards long, but the battle at the moment is all in mid. Flashbang's being used to give the offers the advantage, and it looked like Forrest had a missed shot. He's gonna get legged in return. He's forced down low. Someone from NIP is probably gonna have to get to the safe bomb site. All five players for Astralis on Catwalk. This could be a nasty hit, and Lecro has just the AWP, and he's goose. This is one prong from Astralis, though. They're all gonna be barreling out of Catwalk together. Nobody up and long, but now the smoke's starting to deploy. This is ruining the vision of Get Right. He can't see anything. It's all down to the in this smoke, and oh, the timing! He is gonna get warm, but trade out instantly! Lacros has his chance, now with the swarm by terrorists, a tsunami of them crashing against the A-side. And it's too much for Nip to contend with. Their winning streak may come to an end right here, right now. That's so tough. The player rotating in towards A has an AWP, puts both ops on the defense against all those smokes and flashbangs. Get Rez trying to open up a window to go for this. The Glaive trying to take off his feet in return. Good kill from Dennis. Glaive is low, this is still a possibility. Halfway into the bomb timer, Dennis needs this kill out towards long. He spots it out, but there's the peak from Rail, and Rez with the AWP is gonna chime out one. And Glaive is gonna stop him. He's got an off angle inside of the site. Even with low HP, so much confidence against that weapon. You can see the nightmare of the CT side in full effect. They won two in a row. And now three players, $2,000 or below, on Nip. It's brutal. Really is tough. I mean, those those heavy attacks from Astralis up Catwalk have been so successful for him. The initial players have, have not really been able to string any multi-kill rounds to slow down the hit onto the bomb site to allow players to rotate over, even the long player falling back. Not able to really help out in a lot of those scenarios. Nine to three. NIP would love to buy here with this kind of a deficit at this stage, but it's just Lecro with 6,300, Force with 4,500. Everyone else is really hurting for cash. And that might prompt them to save one. Yeah, that would mean they could potentially concede a 10th round, though. 
on their CT side. So I think that may be coming into some of the decision making as to why Dennis has picked up an MP9. It's going to be Deek on a CZ. Nip are going for this. Oof. All right. A lot rests on this AWP in Lecro's hands. That's over towards Long, where they've had to fight against that Long Pit a number of times. The AWP rang out in mid, trying to get that cross pick. Which should make Lecro feel a little bit safe. He's going to go for a peek in towards the crack. He legs it, Nix. Getright gets the AWP, but if you remember the desk, Getright has zero kills with the AWP in this event. The all-time leading fragger in CSGO. Now trying to get it done with the AWP. Also isolated over the place. I just didn't even drop it to somebody to pre. And there's Getright, speaking of the man with the AWP. Is he going to be able to make it sing for his team? He's going to need to get a full back in this. Oh, the flashbang. The timing could not have been worse, but he actually escapes with his life. He wants the final device, showing a shoulder, waiting for that flashbang, luring Get Right to stick around for the fight. But meanwhile, the A bomb site is open. NIP can't go for this. They have to stay away. Astralis should be able to get up towards 10, but Get Right, the big thing is save that AWP. Do not let that fall into enemy hands. He wants to challenge at least a little bit, but if he's not careful, he's going to get stuck here. There's a the kind of position up close that one flashbang will absolutely destroy him if they want to chase. Back away. Looks like he may be able to hold on to it, but again, that's really a, a small part of this round. The fact of the matter is, the Astralis on the T half gonna move to 10 rounds already. MP9 save, not fantastic. They at least have a couple of sidearms they can drop across to Electro and Forest. I'm really trying to look at the positives here, Jason, but the fact of the matter is that Astralis are they're, they're dumbstring nip again. Yeah, there's, the not, there's not a whole lot of positives to take away from it. Either way, NIP, if you're looking at their perspective right now, they'd be happy to get out of this game with five rounds. Five to ten going into the second half. They would, they would take that any day of the week at this point. Still going to be tough for them to get there with just these three weapons. As you said, can drop a CZ and a Deagle over can buy what they can in this round, and you can see they just, they, they need the rounds. So they are going to reinvest into it. UMP on Get Right, Deagle on Rez. Lecro has that AWP, Forrest to Scout. And you can kind of understand why they put some confidence in it when you think the two rounds they were able to screen together that looked the best for NIP was due to those AWPs, and there goes the Scout. Dennis, half the line. Device gonna jump up, and he's lucky to get away. He saw the danger before it really applied pressure, but mid is open now. Rez alone at this B-bomb site. Dupree is walking his way out, and Astralis don't have to make a simple move. Rez is aware of the possibility he's looking for, but the timing's not right. Oh. Staying close to the smoke, he's dropped from behind. He knew that was coming in the whole way, but he also knew he was gonna get no help from his teammates. A masterclass by Astralis, and they lock this NIP defense out of any resistance. Could be able to save a secondary orb. That would give him a bunch of firepower in the last round if he could hold on to it. Does connect onto Glaive, but he's still got 36 health. Finished off by Dennis. Get right close. Gonna use it on to do pre. They can go for this all of a sudden. That opened everything up. And I think Getright's just gonna do it with or without his teammates. Lecro far away, still in pit. He's saving his AWP. But Getright wants to at least test it. Dennis is in mid. I think they called it off. Astralis may be overextended, but they caught themselves before it got too out of hand. Unfortunately, Lecro, the player that was saving, is the one player with the kit. So if they wanted to go in for that, it would have been really rough. Spotted a couple of players. It was a kid running on one yeah, That's why I was thinking they just go for it. I think they probably should have. I think with a two on two, you go for that retake, especially if Dennis could have picked up that kid. But either way, NIP postured for it. Get right was really keen for it. It was called back at the last moment. So three to 11. Now two ops in the hands of the ninjas due to Lecro saving. This is their last chance to get any kind of buffer in that second half. Oh, and Device is taking it away from Forrest. The nightmare starts. Oh, continues. Yeah, both orps have been nullified. Rez still has one in his hands. Has picked up 
one. Oh, he's pre switching to the grenade. Worst possible moment for him. And that is going to yield a kill for Dennis. A 2 on 2. One of the best chances that Nip have had in recent rounds. Need Rez and Dennis to chime together and somehow pull this off. They're against Zipnix and Glaive, two phenomenal clutch players. I think the tough part is NIP has no clue where Astralis is right now, and someone's going to have to get aggressive and find it out. Dennis going up catwalk. He's taking control of mid. Maybe a chance to stop this cross, but Rez gives it up. Gives up the angle with the AWP. He might not have known it, but Glaive is very exposed out on catwalk. Puts the Molotov out, smokes himself out, which is tough. But the AWP, this is the chance for Rez. Zipnix, and there's the peak. It's just Glaive. Wrong side of the smoke and can't really stop this defuse. If a player gets across that, it's Dennis that's above him on catwalk with a kit. Looking to find a headshot on the approach. He's playing a risky game here, Glaive, but it seems to be working out for him thus far. Smoke on the other side. They peek around the corner. The ops missed, and now Glaive has to go in. The ball's being defused. Glaive needs to stop this and isn't able to do so. Nip will get the smoke defuse to end the half, but they still trail 11-4. They fight tooth and nail to get that fourth round. It was so difficult, and the smoke gives Dennis the cover he needs. NIP have the smallest of smallest of buffers into that second half. No mistakes can be made on their T side. We'll see how they do when we return from the break. Another deep hole to dig out for NIP facing off against Astralis. 4 to 11 is the deficit they face against these juggernauts who have just been unflinching all series long, now switching over.
to the defensive side of Dust2. And NIP must dig deep and find something if they want to move on to the semifinals. They want to even force a third map here. And that is just so far away. Pressure from Astralis. They posture and show mid-aggression and back away from it. As soon as they're spotted. So much on the line, so much history. Not just Counter-Strike, but the Intel Extreme Masters. A nip on the brink of being knocked out of just that. Can Astralis pick up a second pistol? Nip certainly hoping not as they look to make some moves up on Catwalk, courtesy. NIP, they missed a smoke and accidentally smoked themselves off, which could be dangerous. That's not a mistake you want to be making. A stack at this B bombsite, Vince. Place up close, there is a small gap in the smoke, so can look to try and pounce, but elsewhere, Nip are overrunning the site. They're looking great to hold on. The flame is going to come up with one. He was looking good for a second rest. Long range fight with USP is never ideal, but he's somehow going to come ahead alongside Dennis. Great for Nip now, and Dennis has put the final nail on the coffin of the second pistol, and Nip have a lifeline. Some life left in the Swedes. Three players take the beat bomb site while there is a staggered effort to cut off rotations in CT spawn and mid. Well played from NIP, but that was a grueling battle in the beat bomb site. Glaive almost turned that. 5 to 11, an investment still from Astralis. Two scouts come out, upgraded pistols come out. They want to put the hurt right back on the ninjas in pajamas. Scout right can come out towards long. There's a lot of resistance here. There's the AG grenade. He jumps over it, pulls an 8 out. That could be deadly. And that 10 is going to start going to work. Trade it immediately. Glaive, get back. No, the scout picks him off. There was a bunch of damage on the approach for Nip as well, though. Lecro and Dennis feeling the worst of it. But Forrest, he's on the lurk. He's going to fight the remaining CTs. Oh. Dupree, though. Smacks him through the head with the scouts. I believe he heard the AK-47. Let's go and pick that one up for himself. That's actually a great find. It'll be interesting to see if he decides to save it or go for a little bit more damage. But a one versus three, he just wants to back off a valuable weapon. And you imagine if they can bring that into the next round, which I think they will. You might see Dupree buying light armor. He's got a smoke and flash as well. But NIP going to start the second half as you'd like. It's gonna be six to 11 after this as they inch closer. I don't think there was a world in which Forrest thought that Dupree was gonna respond with that immediate headshot. No, I think it clipped the, uh, the underside of Catwalk as well on the way through. Must have been a hell of a shot, didn't see it from his perspective. Looks like Dupree will be able to hold on to the AK-47 though, so it does give a bit of firepower across to Astralis. But Nip will be picking up their sixth round, only their eighth of this match. <laughs> Danes, but this is looking a lot more promising now for ninjas in pajamas. Ooh, what a shot that is. That's nasty. So, light armor is picked up by Dupree. He's got the one AK. And even though it's overwhelming firepower for the ninjas with two AKs, two Mac 10s, and a scout, that AK 47 on Dupree, you know it can be deadly. Dennis looks like he wants to get out mid quick. He's got Zipmix to his right. Again, a sole AK-47 on its own in middle. Gotta be careful. Wants to cut off. He hears the... There's a chance there. Zipmix is gonna continue the spray. Doesn't fight it. He disappears in the smoke, but now he knows. All three players in mid, but that AK-47, they can... Oh, that would be a great help to their economy, and Dupree's gonna cover the retreat. This is actually not too shabby for Astralis. Yeah, even though they're gonna concede the round, they're oh. taking consistent... Damage across the nip and saving guns. Well, these two free rifles going into their first buy, that can help them so much moving forward. If they happen to lose that, they'll still have plenty of money. That'll help them keep AWP in their hands if they need it. Although Rez, he spotted this AK and Dupree. Initially looked like he wanted to stick around for the fight, but just enough to keep Rez at bay. Now he's going to back off. Smart play from Dupree, prioritizing the weapon. Device is definitely going to be a save his. is the closest player but he's going towards the long a side so it's gonna be two saved AKs and now Astralis is gonna be able to put some guns behind it they're expecting to see device with an AWP 
And he has pulled the trigger on just that. But look at what these weapons have afforded Dupree because he saved the AK-47 for two rounds now. He's got 4,200 in the bank. Matt just 2,250. That's massive. That means even if they lose the AWP, they can still rebuy one essentially for free because of that AK-47. Or I guess maybe half off. Vice in mid. Off angle towards the base of Catwalk, peering up over the smoke. He's got Dupree close up. Remember, Dupree played that position earlier, and Astralis blinded him and destroyed him. The flashbang doesn't work as well for the ninjas, and Dupree gets that kill. Able to maintain most of his health. Falls it next in a towards the death with Rez comes out second best. Made damage inflicted to Forest, but it's not too bad. Stabilize. Oh, Glade peeks out with the smoke. Uncharacteristic mistake. He will be punished. Device left alone in the site at A. Dupree is creeping up that spawn ramp to try and help out at long so that no one can turn the corner. That allows Device to focus solely on this one choke point. A minute left for NIP to play with. And readjust it. A big kill for Get Right. Waiting patiently. Device forced out. He's fighting flames. And there's Get Right again, chiming in for a third. And Magisk, all alone, for the B bomb site. Lecro's gonna finish it off. NIP still in this, and Get Right now getting the crowd on their feet. We've got a game on our hands, ladies and gentlemen. The ninjas will not be squashed just yet. As a result of the money you were discussing before, it's going to be more of a half buy, but they do have a scout in play. So still some danger, still some threat. Nick cannot take this round lightly. And Dupree will still be able to drop an AWP in the next round if they want to go that route, exchange it to device. So economics working in the favor of Astralis due to some good decision making. They need to clear out device. Is Dennis going to do it wide? There's the drop for Get Right. He doesn't look. Dennis has it covered, though. Now a window. The next point of danger. Dupree only had time for one shot. Utility going to be used as he secures the site. The bomb's got to make its way in. So time for Astralis to try and set up to do some damage here and see if they can play their way into this round. There is one player, Prez, watching in mid. Him and Lecro pretty much shut down the retake before it begins, and that should be the end of danger. Still two armors to save for Astralis. You don't expect them to be using the Scout and Deagle in the next round. Additionally, could be on the hunt for some exit frags, but Nip are going to close the gap one round further. This is going to be five in a row now for the Swedes. Forrest finds Dupree. So some money going to be burnt, and now Magisk just shy of running into Rez. Up down to reaction speed for Rez. Runs the head over the wall, and Magisk is going to perforate his and get the AK 47. in this round and we'll hold on to the AK likely and on to Dennis too that's gonna sting for Nip they have plenty of money to, to recover and, and rebuy those but yeah you're, you're exactly right I think the bigger the bigger point to make for Astralis is the fact that now what it's been five rounds as you said in this first half or the second half so far and Astralis has gotten away with saving three AK 47s that's a lot of money that they haven't had to spend on their own weaponry that's gonna bolster this so now you're seeing a double off setup come into play you're seeing the Augs out, so Astralis doing as best they can, even in losing five straight. Again, fast mid-pressure, that smoke covering it, but it seems like Dupree has the idea. How aggressive do Nip want to be out mid? Maybe not too much early on. They're happy with the control that they gave. Dupree and Magus both with eyes on mid. Zipnix as well on the spawn ramp. Smoke is going to keep their attention a little bit further, which is going to give NIP time to clear out Catwalk. Nade is there to greet them. Is Nip looking to procure a path on the way to A? Dennis lining up the smoke. Just popped down on the CT side. There is a player there. Currently throwing up the Molotov. Going to stall a little while longer. So Astralis doing a pretty solid job with their counter nades, and Lecro peaks one too many times. Second Molotov there to greet them. And with Lecro's death, they can't be sure now that Astralis won't try and play some aggressive flank behind them. So Nipper caught 
clumped up on catwalk, just the one player on long. And it's gonna come down to get right. He could have the biggest impact in this. We know he's a master of lurking, a master of picking his moment. And look at the stall tactics from Astralis. They're playing this so perfectly. NIP might be forced to go through these smokes. Get right's gonna give up his stance on long. Forrest gonna cover the bomb site, waiting for that peek from Zipnix. It's not coming because device is covering the angle at car, and he's got the first kill. Now Zipnix counts. Now he does so well. And again, just buying time. Doesn't need to take the fight. He's got the ult, he's got the teammates. And now he's gonna clean him up. 15 seconds left. Device puts Astralis on the board for the first time in this second half. A comeback derailed for the time being. Res just 2.4k. Dennis 3.2k. They're gonna be able to drop. But all of the consecutive rounds now gonna be nullified to an extent that Astralis regain a three round lead. Exquisite work from Astralis. I mean, honestly, the MVP of that round was just the grenades. They fended them off for so long, there was not enough time to capitalize at the end. They used a lot of nades early on in the round. Fast paced, Lecro's gonna get out. He's already made it to pit. It's Glaive, and he doesn't have time to react. Beautiful shot from Lecro. But you still, with this double up setup, have device to contend with. Positioned at the back of the site now, looking down long, peering. Using that crosshair, hoping that someone peeks in. Maybe smoke though instead. He's expecting and anticipating some flashbangs. There's actually a gap in this though. So Nip gonna back away. They don't even want to try. They know that Astralis will have an open play. And well, that's why. They don't want to peek earlier because get right has been destroyed. And all of the positives that they had with the first kill going their way along have now been somewhat mitigated. All they have is this long attack, really. Lecro and Rez are here with Forrest, who's in the pit. Dennis is guarding mid. He's in lower dark. Trying to find a timing on these rotations to pounce, and he might have it. Magisk has gone deeper in towards CT spawn, and Dennis now a real chance. As attention is being pulled away, it's perfect. He gets the kill, the headshot from the back. Device has to do more. Zipnix is going to drop away from Catwalk, but Device still with the off angle. Forrest is watching all along. And NIP going to get into the bomb site. Zipnix, the last line of defense, gonna wait for the smoke. There's no one watching alongside. Could get the drop on the first play. It's gonna be a spray down, but it's not gonna go the way of Astralis. Dupree wants to hold on to this orc for dear life, and the ninjas will move to 10 rounds. You have to admire the resilience of NIP to stay in this fight. 16 2 on the first map they lost. Down 11 to 4 at half. And never giving up. NIP gonna find themselves in this game. Astralis gonna be able to have one more buy. And Dupree saving that off, it'll be a powerful one. This is weird. Everything Astralis has will go into this round, and it's the best chance that Nip has had. If they can break Astralis here, they can tie this game up. Lightning fast entry frag onto Long. Now it's looking a little bit ominous for a while when Device got that pick onto Get Right, but they've managed to stabilize. And our timeout will be called. Try and rummage together some ideas of how Astralis can bounce back. Well, they could afford a buy here, but instead they're going to play it a little bit more passively for the time being, playing for the longer haul. There's going to be some drop pistols. I don't think they ever want to be... Uh, the, the, the theory behind this is you imagine that Astralis is just saying, we don't ever want to be in a situation where NIP can gain the lead when we have nothing to fight with. So Deagles, the three P250s, the AWP on Dupree is what they'll bring into the round. Still dangerous. They're just signaling to him. If you want to tie up the score, you're going to have to work hard for it. Astralis' economy game, economy management, has been phenomenal in this map. Yeah, plus we've seen the importance of their counter nades. They wouldn't have had a fantastic helping of grenades if they'd gone in for a force here. Dupree's gonna boost it up, there is a grenade coming over it, chunks, Zipnix. He's gonna be feeling that for a few rounds to come. Nip's gonna need a flashbang here. How are they gonna do it? Dupree will have a chance to get one. And I don't think he'll be able to respond to Flashbang. Oh, he falls off the stack. Perhaps miscommunication between Dupree and Zipnix, but it 
Looked like Zipnix wanted nothing to do with that attack on Catwalk. And Dupree did. Not able to retrieve the orb either on his way out, so that's just on the floor now. By and large, wasted. Yeah, don't want to pick that up. Keep some AKs, keep the mobility. Zipnix can use that smoke. Oh, wrong side of it from Nip's perspective, but only able to get one. Not going to be connecting the dots. And with his death, the A site will follow. Priority one for Astralis in this round. They've done such a good job of saving weapons. It has to be either to find Lecro here in mid or find one AK-47 or go salvage that AWP. And it looks like everyone from Astralis is pushing their respective locations to do just that. Lecro's gonna be a free kill. That's one AK. To get right, immediately takes device away. Covering this AWP. Forcing Astralis to reinvest if they want it. Well, Glaive will be very happy with taking an AK out of the round. Magisk still has Kevlar. But even with the save, we are now down to just a one round deficit. Nippon brought it back from 11 4 half to 12 11 now. Momentum firmly in their favor. But Astralis will have a double AWP setup. A double off setup, which is so intimidating, which has been tough to defeat, but not in this half. I mean, it's been 7-1 to one for NIP since they switched over to the T side. This has been a phenomenal comeback for the Swedes. Starting to feel it just a little bit. Everyone's had their time. A very spread effort. No one individual carrying them to this point. Much more passive from NIP, not pressuring down mid. Shot through the doors is going to give Dupree the confidence to take that angle. Flashbang comes out with almost a minute spam from Dennis actually hits the vice. Both the ops were in mid. Warning shot's going to force the left row back to the beat tunnels. A heavy lean for this defense towards the A side of the map. Damage and grenade. grenades being. Traded from the two teams. Another smoke deployed in the B entrance. It's gonna keep Nip on the back foot for the time being. They can't really afford to push through this. Majisk is holding it alone, but there's no way for Nip to know at this stage. He can try and draw out some more grenades, but Astralis, again, they've been so good at keeping on top of having as many nades as possible going into the latter stages of the rounds. NIP applied enough pressure to B to make Astralis feel like a mid to B split was very, very possible. And Glaive just holding on to this. They threw it a great duel, a great win for Lecro. That might open everything up. It's pulled the rotation. Glaive is exposed out in the open, and so is Device. Misses that shot. He's got to fall back now. 20 seconds to go. Molotov's been put onto the site. This is going to stall the plan, but a smoke has been there to neutralize it. Zipnix can see heads protruding over the side to get one, looking for a second, gets the spray on to get right as well. NIP desperately need to hold on to this round, but Astralis now has the right advantage. As far as this thing's about wanting, Rez trying to spray as best as he can. He's not sure the remaining CTs are at. Whiffing bullets back to the right of both Zipnix and Rez, and finally Device is gonna make this retake a reality. And enough time for the defuse, Astralis get it done. What a beautiful round from Zipnix. NIP had the players in position to stop that exactly and just weren't able to do it. The all rings out. And no, it's not a 1BX situation, but Zipnix is still clutch as hell. He tears NIP apart in the post plant. All the advantages. And Astralis able to secure a win that lets them continue to invest into this half. 13 to 11 now, a two round lead. It's NIP now on the back foot, running out of money. Oh god, this is so fast. So are they going to expect it? Device is it. Neither is Zipnix. That is so fast. No chance to respond. No idea it's coming. And Dennis hits like a truck. Desolation from Dennis. A site falls. What a response. To a brutal retake loss. Glaze, though, going to keep the dream alive. Still plenty of grenades for Astralis. 
They can go for this, Vince. They really can. Look at that grenade damage as well. It chunks Forrest. He's down to 50. Ah. But there's Forrest. Answers back, picking shrapnel out of his teeth. Silences Glade. Eviscerates the retake. And Nip will draw one round closer again. Yeah, Astralis forced away. Not a lot of money. Devices on nothing. They've played it conservative with their economy. It'll be interesting to see what they do. You imagine it's going to be another small investment of pistols. They don't want NIP to take everything away. Not going into round 26. This crowd wants a third map. NIP wants a third map, but they want to take these guns away. Here's Dennis, and he's not being covered. He gets the AWP out of his hands and matches. Just distracted for a moment. It's only the AWP they can bring forward, and certainly now it's going to be a save. NIP has responded to every challenge, every obstacle placed in front of them. Keeping this close down the stretch. What a courageous call as well. After losing a retake to say, Dennis, push. This one's Get on you. Entries. This one's on you, baby. Yep. What a round. And one of the few times it feels like Astralis just wasn't ready for what, it, what NIP was showing him. Third time out used by Astralis. And they are going to buy into this. Buy with everything they've got. It's not pretty. SMGs, a CZ on Glaive, a Scout on Device. So much hangs in the balance here. Oh, just spotted the player. Peeking down the bottom side, and this time it's red. It's usually the aggressor. He is expecting a flashback potentially. Never came. So free kill for Magisk, and now it's Astralis' turn to dish the damage and repel the push. This is going to open the map up as well, and you can see that's exactly what Dupree realizes. He's pushing to upper dark. Two players go down along. They've spotted two in mid, and they've no force as far back in T-spawn. Dupree could ruin everything. And Astralis, when they have these buys, they take chances, and this one might pay off massively. NIP, even though it's a three on four, they have all the nades. They have everything they want to get back into this in Dupree. He can get so much information. When he starts turning this corner, he can send Zipnix and tell him long is clear. You can fall back. You can start to centralize. NIP need to make a decision. They need to make it soon. Oh. Device is watching, and he's down. He's down for the fight. That's going to open up NIP's path. That's going to allow them the escape out of the potential danger of the flank. But Glaive gets one from behind. That will keep Nip honest at this stage. Astralis have the player advantage. Lepro's going to try and take the initiative. He's going to push in. But it's the end of the game. He gets, gets the break. Still gets the kill. 50% health remaining intact. Astralis. Positioning for a potential retake. Glaive's going to come in now from the backside of tunnels. I think Forrest has to have heard this. Yeah, he hears it. This is big. Molotov in. Zip nicks out. Glaive looking to extinguish this round. Try and take the ball away. His position is now compromised. And Nip have drawn us even. The first map may have been a dud, but this one is delivering. For the first time in this series, NIP have gained control of the match. Astralis, everything they had went into it. That was such a huge moment in the round. Lecro getting the better of Dupree. It really was, and that might have been that. Yeah, it's been frustrating if you're Dupree flanking from the B bombs and all the way to T spawn, only to have to turn back around and get dropped. And IP gonna simplify. Three players slowly walking in towards the B bomb site. Magus with the Deagle. If he peeks at the wrong moment, he could get eliminated. He spots them all. They're gonna move in. Oh, oh what a shot! They do more. Had the chance. Res. The push towards long and NIP is piling on now. But again, Astralis has been so good at finding some of these AK 47s and just saving them moving forward. They could use some of that now. They could use anything. Rez gonna back away from the fight, but there's one that's pushed up mid. Now they know where both are, and Rez precision on his index. And NIP is gonna take a 14 to 13 lead. We are going the distance at the business end of the second map. Nip are shining bright. Astralis can buy. They need to prioritize whether they want the AWP 
which you'd expect they do, but in doing so, it's going to drop them down to very few grenades. The Vice has no armor either. They know how desperate this scenario is. It's their final timeout. They've used all four in regulation. They'll have none going into overtime. This timeout needs to be everything. This timeout needs to give them a game plan for three rounds. It all starts with this one. No kits, Jason. No kits, no armor on device. Nip have been getting onto bomb sites consistently. Will that force Astralis' hand to play more aggressive, I wonder? For the time being along, it seems to be the case, but Nip aren't interested. They're backing away, they're still at T-spawn. So the limited utility Astralis have, a lot of it's been tossed in long, and it's for absolutely nothing in return. Nobody wanted to blink first. So cautious from each team. No more peeking up mid with the ops. No more peeking towards catwalk with the ops. Small slip from Dupree. The nade not making it over. That could have chucked down Nip just a little. Forrest waiting for a peek. It's not going to come. One minute. The utility for Astralis, which has been so strong in this series, is starting to run low. Two smokes, two flashes, and an HE. Some smokes now being deployed from NIP. Looking to initiate a response. Oh, can't walk. Flashbang in the eyes of Zip. Nix can't see anything. Now it has subsided. We've seen him in this position before, though, with a pistol. And we've seen NIP try and edge their way around that smoke where he had a kill in that round with the pistol. So you could see he was looking for that same thing again. Flashbang in the eyes. 25 seconds and no one has spotted what's coming. Here we go, it's all on Zipnix and Device. Zipnix with the orb, Taylor Nade is going to be getting three with a spray! Single-handedly stops the push! Has snacked this round away from MIP in such an integral moment! And to make matters worse, it's a clean sweep rounds. We touched on it, Zipnix knew exactly what was coming and he downloaded NIP. Read the play the whole way, and he had the perfect moment. No one able to react in time, and I think Get Right even had smoke as he turns to try and finish that off. 14-14, we're not done yet. Round 29 coming in hot. NIP out of money behind this buy. This might be their last chance to get a third map for us. For themselves. This time more fast pace. Get Right's gonna come out. And the long defenders, they want nothing to do with it. They lost the advantage in Get Right. That's not the weapon to peek long. He goes for a shoulder peek. Making sure the defense backed away appropriately. Respecting him appropriately. But Device finds Dennis. Just as he descends into pit. And that's why the respect was shown. They know this man makes long his own. Now Nip. Gonna have to try and funnel out the masterful playthrough here. Astralis with a bit of damage to Dupree, forces him out of mid. No longer gonna have control over this. Oh, he just spotted him. He did, but that glimmer of a pixel is gonna be the demise of Lecro Rez. Nip go from the pinnacle to the pit, and now Astralis looking to move one step closer to securing their position in the semi finals. Clutch has many meetings, Vince, but you have to. Just respect the fact that Zipnix embodies all of them. These last two rounds when Astralis has needed him to tie things up, to give them a lead. He's been spectacular. With the AUG holding Astralis in this game. And all of a sudden it's NIP, it's Forrest. It, I, I think Astralis have to realize this scenario. 20 seconds left, they're already gonna start the hunt. It's a five on one, throw as many players away. You didn't lose anyone in the previous round. You've got plenty of money. Go take this gun away from Forrest. He's got a battle to hold on to it. I can't imagine a way that she does if it goes down, but they know where he is. Everyone now congregating. Four seconds left in the round. Still some time after that. And I don't know if he's caught in the head. There's Glade Force finds that as well. Now I think Astralis has to be careful. If they lose a third, it could hurt so much, and Forrest holds on. That was so important, so desperate. It's the best weapon that NIP have in this round. A 
unbelievable hold again from Zipnix with the Orc. As you say, he really has been the player they desperately required to step up, and he stepped up in a massive way. Last round of regulation. It could be the last round of the quarterfinals here at IEM Katowice. And NIP will have an AWP and some pistols. We saw NIP burn two timeouts in a row previously. You might just do it twice. This round is everything. This round is your life in the major. It's your life here at IEM Katowice. Here we go. Spodek, do you want a third map? They've got an up and Deagles and a P250 to do it. Forest is their lifeline for the moment. Very close on landing one of those shots on mid. Would have been the perfect start. This is where things are going to slow down somewhat, start to dwindle away for Nip. We've seen Lacro in rounds previously pull out some crazy one deeks. We know Rez has it within him to strike. And you better believe with leadership like Glaive, they know the buy is going to be very low. Possibly scouts, Deagle, something that has that one tap potential. They have no reason to peak. They have no reason to overextend. That's why they're playing so passively. They have utility to respond, as you said as well. So as soon as they have an idea of what's coming, NIP need to find a way with these pistols to get close, to close the gap. Everyone gonna shuffle in towards upper B. It's Forest and Lecro in mid. Smoke is gonna cover them for the moment, but if he wants to get aggressive, this could be so dangerous. Even if he gets the first pick, they hunt him down. There's the shot, he gets away. No, he doesn't. He's tacked up, but Zipnix covers his retreat. That's from mid, and they found their way into the B bombs. I'm used to have matches to deal with. Still so much to deal with. There he is, it's traded. A two on three. Get right and rest. Weight of the world on their shoulders. Not far off from the dig is Rez, but Zipnix gets the upper hand. And I'm get right, gonna have to wind back the years with the AWP. A guy that you don't label him with, and Zipnix is gonna get it done. Astralis weather the storm, and they move through to the semi finals. Zipnix gets seven kills in those last three rounds, and he saves the day once again, steps up in magnificent fashion to close it out for Astralis. They're gonna be facing MIBR in the semi finals of IEM Katowice in an honorable battle for NIP, even though they fall short.